Today on Paul's Old Crap, we're going to do an unboxing video for Microsoft TrueType Master Set. This is a package of TrueType fonts for the Macintosh computer. Now, there is actually a version of this for Windows computers, but it's not actually called TrueType Master Set. I think this is just basically called the TrueType Font Pack or something like that, but um, yeah, this is basically the Mac version, which is one of the reasons why I bought it. Uh, I picked this up from eBay for pretty cheap because honestly, I don't think there's a whole lot of demand for random boxed sets of fonts from the 90s. So yeah, there wasn't really a whole lot of competition. And I bought it mainly for the purpose of doing a video like this and because I like picking up this sort of box software where I can like recreate um, the situation where in the 90s if you needed more fonts then you would go to the store and you'd buy fonts. That's not exactly the case these days but I never got to experience that part of computing back in the day so now that I actually have money I do that now and I make videos for the rest of you. And I don't expect there's going to be a whole lot of videos of people who do unboxing and installing of uh, ancient font packs because you know, who, who cares, but yeah, I care. So what we're gonna do is basically take a look inside of this and then install this onto one of my Macintosh computers. And it is a sealed box and sometimes I do feel bad about uh, breaking the seals on these things, but you know, really what good is this going to do just sitting on a shelf, so yeah. Anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to take our lucky giant knife and we're going to make a cut right along the top here. This is not the ideal tool for this purpose, but I think it's hilarious using this, so... never get these corners to come out properly. Okay, let's take a look. So there's really not much to this. Um, we start with the obvious. We have the package of three and a half inch floppy disks. And there's four discs total in here, so we will be opening this up. Actually, we might as well just do it right now. Um, I think there's a little, yeah, little easy tear type thing going on there. Let's see. You're important to us. Register today. No, thank you. Uh, so yeah, we have disk 1 installed, disk 2, disk 3, disk 4, uh, basically just says Apple Macintosh series, high density, and version 1.0. I'm assuming that's basically the version of the entire font pack. I have no idea if they made any different versions, but yeah. So we will uh, deal with those later. Uh, what else do we have here? <laughs> You know, I think I've seen this exact thing before. I think it was when I opened up my Microsoft Bob uh, software box. It's uh, one of the address of the most important person at Microsoft. And then under here it says, so do we. Yep, exactly. So do we. Uh, oh yeah, and I remember seeing this, your chance to win a free trip to Hawaii or Florida. Um, that may have sounded appealing at the time, but uh, these days, uh, maybe not. So... <laughs> Yeah. Ah, we have the Microsoft license card. Okay, so it says Microsoft TrueType font for Macintosh version 1.00. Yep, that's what we expected. Uh, nothing else important on there. Ooh, okay. So if your computer is too ancient 
to uh, use 1.4 megabyte floppies, uh, there's this little thing that you fill out uh, to get 800k disks. Um, please enter the appropriate information on this order coupon and send to Microsoft Corporation to receive free 800k disks. You know. Oh, so this, uh, uh, unfortunately it says offer expires September 30th, 1994. So, unfortunately I can't send this to Microsoft and get my, uh, get my other floppy disks. That's, uh, that's too bad. Um, let's see what this is. Uh, I think this is like some sort of, uh, okay, quick reference card. So it basically just gives you a couple of the uh, examples of the different fonts here. Um, well, I guess this is the front of the card. Okay, it tells you how to do the installation. Uh, so it looks like there's an install that you actually run off of the floppy drive. And more than likely, it'll basically just be copying the actual font files and then dropping them into the fonts directory in the computer. Uh, if we take a look at the box, um, oh yeah, okay, I don't know if it'll show up very well on the camera, but uh, up here for a system requirements, it does say it requires a System 7 based Macintosh computer. And System 7 is where you had, I think, that fonts folder where you drop all of your fonts into. Uh, or maybe it was System 7.5 or 7.1 that did that. Maybe System 7 was a little weird still. I know that doing fonts in like System 6 was really strange. You had to use some sort of weird utility that put them somewhere. But I think in System 7 there is probably just the fonts folder that they all just magically get dropped into. So, um, yeah, it's a l oh. Uh, interesting. So, with my previous rambling here, I'm kind of correct, I suppose. Uh, it looks like in System 7, the fonts go into the system folder. Not a specific fonts folder, but in System 7.1, there is a folder called fonts that you put the fonts into. Um, yeah, because it actually has little notes here about how you can, uh, remove unused fonts and then it says the different instructions for system 7 and then system 7.1 it has the fonts folder so yeah i can never remember that stuff um, okay so this is a full reference card it looks like for all of the true type fonts that you actually get in this package um, so the different categories i guess you got headline fonts decorative fonts text fonts and more text i guess that just continues on the rest of the way so, uh, now I think by default the Apple system will include some of the basic fonts. Because um, we got like Times New Roman here, and I'm not too sure, but the default system might actually include that. Um, other fonts I've recognized in here, so yeah. Now I don't know if those ones are also going to be true type fonts or some other type of fonts. Uh, my knowledge of fonts is a little iffy, so yeah. Anyway. Um, this is a fairly hefty manual for fonts. I don't really understand what you could possibly need to, uh, to read this for. It's basically just longer information about how to do your installs and... Uh, I suppose this gives you a background on fonts because it mentions World War II, so I guess they're going for the, uh, the very in-depth background on fonts, apparently. Um, looking good with true type fonts. Yes, that would be nice. I wonder if that was the end, and now it's just basically... I don't know, wait. Okay, it's install, yeah. Basically just installation instructions. Um, Just a lot of general information, and then designing with type, a few basics. What could they be explaining in here? 
Okay, so they're going right into the details on fonts. This is kind of interesting information because before now I don't think I would have ever considered looking into fonts with this much detail, but choosing sizes and you've got all of this strange information basically telling you how to do design. It's actually kind of interesting. How to indent paragraphs? Okay. Talking about different combinations of fonts. Hmm. This is actually uh, decently helpful information for people like me. Um, I have really no artistic ability whatsoever, so... Yeah, this is actually... Having this um, explained is uh, very, very interesting. Fonts and font vendors. It tells you who actually created all of these fonts. Wow. Interesting. Then it goes into detail about each of the companies that created fonts. This is an unbelievable amount of information that nobody ever wants to know about fonts. Even if you're a graphic designer, I don't see why any of this would really matter. Uh, but now it just goes into more detail on each font specifically. Wow. Oh, and then it has a little glossary at the end. So, uh, there's a lot of information about fonts in this book. There's a lot of more, a lot more information than I thought there would actually be in here. So that is pretty crazy. Um, let's just take another look at the uh, the box, though. I don't think we actually looked at everything that was on here. Uh, we did talk about the uh, the system requirements. There is a little thing up here I've noticed. It says cross-platform compatible with Microsoft Windows 3.1, and I think what this means is the uh, the font pack that was available for Windows 3.1, the that one I mentioned earlier, where it was just called uh, I think it was just called True Type Font Pack or something, and that was the Windows version of this, and. If I had to make an assumption, I would say it's the same fonts that are included in that pack for Windows. So, yeah. I just mentioned something about uh, TrueType is built into System 7, which is why this kit uh, requires minimum System 7 to handle the fonts. So, um, Before System 7, if you were doing this sort of thing with System 6, uh, I think you might have to dig into things like Adobe Type Manager. I believe that was one option where if you were doing like desktop publishing and the built-in fonts in System 6, which I don't think there were really that many of, um, if you needed extra fonts, you had to have some sort of font manager to do all that for you. And I think the Adobe one was probably fairly popular. So, yeah. Well... I think what we're going to do now is dig up one of my old Macintosh computers and uh, we'll install some fonts. Okay, so we've got our capture system set up. This is my Macintosh Quadra 840AV. And as you can see, we are running system software 7.6.1. And I think I mentioned previously in the video that anything above system 7.0 uses a fonts folder in the system folder. Whereas system 7.0 itself, I think you just had the fonts scattered randomly inside the system folder. So at least with this version of the system software, it does put all of my fonts in a, a nice single spot here. So as you can see, I do actually have a number of fonts already installed. So I think we're going to leave those fonts in there. And then I'm going to actually try and install these new fonts on top of them. Hopefully there's no conflicts. So we're just going to put the first install disk in the drive. All right. Ooh, there's a thing that says read me with three exclamation marks. 
Okay, before installing, uh, disable all your virus protection. Um, blah, blah, blah. I don't think this is uh, really that critical. Um, using system seven, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Yeah, this is basically just installation instructions. So, so there's the actual content and we're gonna go ahead and just run the installer application. You hear the floppy drive working hard. And I don't know why it deleted my control strip from the bottom of the screen. That's kind of weird. Okay, welcome to the Master Set Installer. Now is a great time to fill out your registration card. Mm, no thanks. Uh, let's take a look at customize. Uh, looks like it's just if we decide which fonts we want to pick. So we're going to install all of them. So we're going to jump back to the easy install. Now, one thing I did notice is it looks like we're going to have some duplicates of fonts I already have on the system. So I'm not too sure how it's going to handle that. Let's just go ahead and try installing. Uh, okay, no applications can be running. Continue. So I have a feeling that this is going to take a while because it's a floppy drive. So I think we'll just uh, speed through this and pick up when it's uh, done. Okay, so the installation finished and it was kind of strange because at the very end it said that uh, I had to drag the, um, the fonts into the system. But I think, okay, so the way Mac OS works, uh, I think with system seven, Maybe I was thinking that you have to put them in the system file for system seven, whereas 7.1 and everything is in the fonts folder. So my memory is kind of fuzzy on this one. So I think when I said system 7.0, you put them in the system folder, I think what that actually means is physically drag them into the system file. And the system file is kind of acting like a folder. Now, I mean, none of this really makes any difference for what we're doing here because we have a fonts folder. And as I've just taken a look in here, uh, those fonts I installed aren't in here because we started off with 50 fonts and we still have 50 fonts. Uh, I think what it did do is it placed a folder with the fonts on the uh, my hard drive here. And here we go. MS master set. So... Um, font library, and then there's system 7.1 only. So we want to open the font library one. And okay, so we've got 53 items in this folder here. So this looks like all of our fonts. All right. So I'm going to just select all of them and I'm going to drag them into my fonts folder. Oh my God, this is going to be a pain. Uh, let's see. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select them all and I'm going to drop them into a backup folder that I am duplicated from the original fonts earlier. And yes, so there's going to be some uh, duplicate items in here. And I'm just going to opt to replace those. And then what I'm going to do is... I can't rename the folder. Oh my God. Whoops. Okay, so if we take all of the fonts we have in here, move them here. Is it gonna let me do this? probably trying to decide if it wants to let me do this. Oh, okay, that worked. So then what we want to do is jump into our 
combined old and new fonts, drop them into the fonts folder. And that worked, apparently. Okay, so we have 98 fonts in here. Now, I don't know if I need to reboot, actually, to make these take effect. Uh, let's just pop into Clarisworks. And, okay, building font menu. And this looks like all of our new fonts. So I'm seeing ones that uh, I know were specifically on the uh, the Microsoft install. All right. Any day now. It's strange because it didn't take this long the last time I ran the application. I don't know. I think this may have just crashed. Yeah, my mouse no longer moves. Okay, we broke the system. Uh, I'm going to reboot it. Okay, so my reboot completed. And if we take a look back in my fonts folder, I think this is all of the fonts that are supposed to be in here. Uh, I know with uh, the Mac OS, if you do an unexpected reboot, uh, some of your more recent changes to your file system might not actually save. So... Yeah, but it looks like that was okay. And I'm going to relaunch Clarisworks here because I think maybe the reason it crashed in the first place was because I overwrote some of the fonts that the system was actually using. So yeah, here we go. The word processor is now open. And if we take a look at our fonts, uh, my fonts menu does have uh, a lot of new stuff in here. And it's nice because it actually gives you this little preview of all your fonts, too. I think if I was just to open simple text, it wouldn't actually uh, preview the fonts as you have them here. Um, so if we take this, we jump it up to large size, and let's try some of these fonts. Now, Comic Sans, I think, was already on the system, but uh, yeah, everyone loves Comic Sans. How can you how can you hate that font, right? Uh, let's see if there's anything real interesting. Um, hmm, that looks weird. What is this one? Oh, that is pretty crazy looking. Uh, I think there was other, so let's see here. Okay, so like handwriting style fonts, that's not bad. Um, I think there was another one down here I want to look at. What is this? Yeah, this looks pretty crazy, uh, except it can't render the uh, uh, little symbol thing there. I have really no idea what it's actually called. It's a quotation, but only half of it. I probably sound like an idiot right now, but that's okay. Uh, we've got some symbol looking fonts down here. I don't know what this is supposed to be. That's fascinating. Let's see, elephant. I don't know if that was on there already. Yeah, okay, that's, eh, that's not bad. I think this is what, Century Gothic or something? Yeah. It's a nice font. B Box, I think that might have been on there already. Yeah, it's not bad. Eh, let's see. Another kind of, uh, well, handwriting-ish, maybe. Not really. Uh, what's this one? Yeah, not bad. Uh, let's see. 
Minion Web. I have no idea what this is. Yeah, looks kind of generic to me. Old English text, I think, is what this one was. I'm actually not sure if this is even part of the original pack because I did actually have a number of fonts that are already in the system, and I have no idea where those ones came from. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that's nice. Times New Roman. So I think I basically got Times and Times New Roman. Uh, this is the one I think that Microsoft provided. And then there's this one. I'm assuming this is also a Microsoft font. So, yeah. Well, that's kind of neat. So I don't think there's really anything else we can uh, cover here. Um, they're fonts. I mean, what else did you expect, really? Uh, yeah, I think this was... Uh, it's it's the experience is what I'm after, really. And I think this is kind of neat because I think this is the first time ever that I've actually had a box of fonts and actually installed them onto the computer with floppy disks. I think any time that you install fonts these days, you just search online for the font name and then one of a hundred font websites will pop up and then you just download it and like it'll just install itself. And it's not really how things were back in the day. You had to go out to a store, buy your fonts, open the box, install them in your computer, find out where they installed them to, and then, of course, deal with the hassle of things like Mac OS, where it really doesn't like it if you try to overwrite its old fonts. So, Yeah. Because I'm remembering back when I was doing, like, uh, schoolwork on my old Macintosh 2SI, and I actually used Clarisworks as well to do all my homework. And I think I had a small collection of fonts, probably whatever the system origi like or the, whatever the Mac OS originally came with. So, I mean, nothing overly exciting. I think I was just using that Arial font or whatever. And yeah, nothing, uh, nothing special because I had no way of obtaining new fonts for my Mac. When you're in high school, you can't really go out and pay money for fonts at the store because you're poor. So... Yeah. Anyway, I don't think there's really anything else we can talk about because they're fonts. Really interesting stuff, right? So, yeah, I think this wraps it up. Um, thank you for watching.